as you can tell i am not a pro i don't have a proper mic so bear with me i'm gonna use this as my mic okay this sounds good actually i think we're ready to start hi everyone my name is marcella um this would be my first q a after like 20 videos on my channel there are some questions on um some of my videos especially regarding living in singapore um getting a job quitting a job um in singapore and i'm not the best at answering the comments so i'd just like to create this video and answer all the questions that you've sent which i really appreciate um so let's get started to it <laughs> um first comment regarding me quitting the job did you quit without something lined up yes i quit without something lined up that was actually something that i tried to achieve um before i end 2023 i want to do something out of my comfort zone which is quitting with uncertainties with nothing lined up um and i managed to do that um also thanks to the pr that i just received i can quit and still stay in singapore um, I just want to try to do something um, daring for once. You're literally like the fourth S YouTuber I see quitting their job and it's like the universe giving me a sign to tell me everything is gonna be okay because I'm not doing this alone. Um, honestly, everything is gonna be fine. Um, there are also questions about getting a job in Singapore, not just on my YouTube but also on my other social media channels and i think i'll just do a walk down the memory lane or how i got the first job in singapore so i studied in a private uni for my diploma in singapore and then i transferred from my bachelor's to the uk and then i came back to singapore um using work holiday visa where that visa allows me to work or to holiday for six months so with that visa i secured an internship um in a startup um so i did the internship for six months and then from there um they offered me a full-time role and then and then i stayed there for two years before i jumped to my previous company for almost two years and now i'm already moving to a new company i think most of the questions that i got is on like how to get a job in singapore as a foreigner so as mentioned so if you graduated from one of the commonwealth countries you can actually apply for the work holiday visa and that will give you a head start um a six month visa um to work in singapore so this will be an advantage because the company doesn't have to sponsor you any visas but then the problem here is you only have six months to work um so i would say like contract work or internship would be um the best um job to search when you have this visa if you don't have the work holiday visa first you, the easiest way to get a job in singapore is if you have a mutuals if you network a lot with people um you try to find if there anyone um in your circle that has an opportunity that matches what you're looking for i think that would be the easiest aside from there um there are websites that um gonna be very helpful for you to look for jobs personally i'm into startups so i always try to look for jobs in startups and two top websites that i use to find startup jobs are from the yc website and the antler website actually there are three third one is tech in asia so for yc and antler um they have they will feature like if their portfolio companies are hiring for tech in asia they are a tech startup media so of course um they work with a lot of startups um and startups can um post their job ads on tech in asia um in fact tech in asia is the f the platform that i used to, to land my first um internship in singapore um, I also use LinkedIn. Um, in LinkedIn, you can go through the job portals or you can go specifically to um, the companies and see if there are any um, companies that are hiring. Um, aside from LinkedIn, there's also Noteflare for those looking on tech roles. There's also Job Street. And lastly, if I am interested in any companies, I will just go to their company website and see if they're hiring um, in their careers page there are also some questions um coming in from my apartment haunt video how does this work with viewings is it enough time to look for one or two weeks i think one or two weeks wouldn't be enough as a lot of um available apartments for rent are usually posted one or two months before the move-in date um because usually that's the time where um 
tenants like myself if i want to leave the place i should give a heads up to the landlord one or two months in advance so when i got this new place that i recently moved in i've actually already started looking six months before my move-in date that and that's way too early but i did that so just i can get a rough estimate on um what's the pricing like for like one bedroom for a studio or for two bedrooms if you're lucky there are last minute um tenants who decided to leave and Leonard would just prefer someone who can move in immediately also an advantage for you to negotiate because not a lot of people can move in so quickly and if you can do that that's a plus point um for you to negotiate on a better price but i think ideally it's around one or two months how much rent do you pay for this apartment um i think you were asking about how much rent i pay for um the previous apartment that i stayed in so in the previous apartment that i stayed in i paid for 630 dollars um it's insanely cheap i must say um it's a new condo um in canberra area i got the place back in 2020 early 2020 um the landlord um is not staying in singapore so all the four rooms are for rent um it's huge i think it's close to 2000 square feet um i have my own room and my own bathroom but it's not and suite there's one master bathroom and there's like two other common rooms sharing toilet um so there are three toilets as i mean i think i got lucky when i got that um apartment um however it's it's far in canberra it's in the red line it's around like 40 minutes to orchard and around like 15 minutes to cbd i'm not complaining i think it was a really good deal it was a really good steal um i stayed there from 2020 yep three years um and the landlord was really really nice um i paid 630 all the way um yeah yep so i think um last year um the property or the real estate market was really bad um currently we're paying 2600 um for one bedroom um a small living room a study room kitchen um bomb shelter and two bathrooms the first asking price was around like 3200 to 3300 so we negotiated almost around like 600 to 700 dollars um so it's really tricky you really need to first do your research around the area that you live in what's the usual normal price and what's the asking price that um the landlords are asking now i think right now it has gotten better um compared to last year but what the landlords are asking are still above the market value so you really need to know on um, the value so that you can negotiate fairly with the landlord um and yeah it it's not easy um to find this place we have toured to almost like 10 different places um it's very time consuming and it's mentally t tiring to always have to negotiate um introduce yourself um to new people landlord and the agents i hope you'll get your new place soon S some of the websites that i use to find um places to rent is rent in singapore um property guru 99.co I would highly encourage you not to use Facebook Marketplace, Carousel, because there are a lot of scammers out there. We almost got scammed for $7,000. Just stick with friend in Singapore and Singapore99.co and Property Guru. And make sure you double check the agents that you're talking to. Make sure they, are, they actually exist. Um, their credentials um, are not fake. Can someone single and unmarried with an income of 2500 to 3000 survive in Singapore? um i had some savings in the past but then i started um my first job in singapore as an intern and i was getting paid like around 1000 singapore dollars per month and i did survive in singapore um my rent at that time was around 550 um per month um it was in an hdb but it was newly renovated um i stayed with the landlord um i think that's why it's pretty cheap um also the location is so so far it's in sambawang and it's like 10 minutes walking distance um, from the mrt so it's not very convenient um by public transport but you can get a cheap rent like that and i would say the place is pretty nice because one of the one of the criteria for me is at least like a clean new preferably aesthetic um interior um and i got it for 550 so i think you can what if one gets married in the future then the minimum income level to sustain in that condition 
I don't know how to answer this because I think it really depends on um, what you and your partners expect um, in terms of um, your living standards. For me, I don't think I don't think that would be enough. Like I mentioned previously, my rent for my current place now is two thousand six hundred. So with that income, I don't think you can save up a lot. Um, it's probably just like expenses and expenses and there are a lot of rules um, and theories about like how much you should be paying for your rent um, in pers- in ratio um, towards how much you're getting per month so I think you can google that up and see what numbers are you comfortable with not me binge watching all your youtube videos I am happy to read this but I'm also very shy at the same time um, I generally like to create content um, but sometimes when I know people are watching I'm like oh shit what are they thinking about me and, and stuff but anyways all the best for you girl thank you um, looking forward for your next video adventure with your hubby um, can you make videos about how much you spent as a couple in Singapore I don't think a lot of things um, have changed a lot since we got married. So I did mention in the beginning that my rent is around, our rent is around two thousand six hundred, and then a lot of our expenses are actually mostly the same with um, the last video that I posted um, about how much I spent in a week in Singapore. My expenses don't change; it's still the same. Like I'm still eating the same food, going to the same um, gym studios. Um, nothing much has changed so except for the rent that has now increased to 2600 I think that's all the questions that I've managed to compile um, thank you so much again for watching and supporting this channel <laughs> if you have any other questions leave it in the comments down below and maybe I'll create another one of these videos I hope it was helpful and I wish you guys all the best those looking for jobs in Singapore um, I think after COVID things have been better for the job market because I'm seeing a lot of like more job ads uh, and if you're looking for a place to rent and spend a lot of time in the research um, that's how you can get like a good deal um, start months in advance um, so you know roughly the area um the pricing of that area i think that's all okay let's end this video see you in the next video bye